Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Following proper positioning of the teeth and balancing the occlusion, the wax trial dentures with mounting rings are removed from the articulator to facilitate waxing. The materials needed for waxing a denture are pink base plate wax, two number seven wax spatulas, a cleoid discoid instrument, a red-handled knife, a Bunsen burner, and a crucible of molten pink base plate wax. There are many methods of waxing a denture, but we're demonstrating the molten wax added technique. The wax trial dentures must be sealed to the cast with pink base plate wax to ensure their proper position. Rough and irregular areas of wax are removed with a very hot number seven wax spatula and care must be taken not to allow wax to flow on the teeth. Additions of molten pink base plate wax are then added around the collars of the teeth in order to begin the definition of the gingival cuff or roll. Notice that many additions of molten wax are needed. Extreme care and neatness are necessary to keep wax off the teeth. The lower trial denture is waxed similarly. After bulking up the gingival area and allowing the wax to cool, the sharp end of a number seven wax spatula is used to begin the gingival contour. Notice that all wax is being removed from the anatomical portions of the teeth. Only the collars of the supplied teeth should be covered with wax.
The round end of the number seven wax spatula is next used to carve the gingival cuff and smooth the flange portion. The gingival contour is further refined and the wax is removed from the tooth surface. All wax must be removed from the teeth. No wax solvents are to be used. After rough carving and contouring, a hot number seven spatula is used to smooth the surface. A cuspid eminence is added in molten wax. The wax is then flamed with a Hanau torch. The flame should always be kept moving and very few strokes of the torch are needed. The lingual surfaces of the teeth should be smooth with a palate. This can be accomplished by further additions of wax.
All excess wax is now removed from the boxing edge. The maxillary flange thickness should be four millimeters. The palatal surface should be three to four millimeters in thickness. The mandibular, labial, and buccal flanges should be four millimeters thick. The lingual flange should be three to four millimeters thick and smooth. The palatal and lingual surfaces should be smooth with no cervical bulge. Many of these requirements for thickness are fulfilled by proper construction of the base plates prior to the waxing technique. After waxing, the cast should be returned to the articulator in order to ensure that the tuberosities do not impinge on the retromolar pad area. The waxed and carved dentures should look slightly bulky to ensure that after polishing, the acrylic dentures will have the desired contours. For the split cast remount technique, the waxed trial dentures and mountings are removed from the articulator. A sharp laboratory knife is used to create a slight notch between the master casts and the mountings. This notch is placed around the entire circumference of the upper and lower mountings. After soaking the trial dentures and mountings, the mountings can be separated with a sharp blow on the knife blade inserted into the prepared notch. The lower is done similarly. With the master cast previously keyed with a fast cut wheel, the processed dentures can be returned to the mountings and also articulator for a post-processing remount occlusal equilibration. This type of post-process remount to the articulator is called the split cast technique. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.